Right then, that was a bit of an interesting game and a bit of a baptism of fire in the Europa League there for, for Ruben Amrim on his first game in charge at Old Trafford. And it was an absolutely lightning fast start from United, wasn't it? Uh, 48 seconds, Garnacho's opened the scoring, capitalising on a little bit of a combination of a, a defensive error by the keeper and a little bit of um, good pressing from Rasmus Hoyland, who I think probably shaded it as man of the match, I think, today. Um, scoring United's fastest European goal um, since March 1991. Uh, let me know in the comments who was that previous fastest goal against. Now, despite taking the early league league and uh, completely dominating the ball for basically the entirety of the game, I'm just going to get the stats up for what it actually was in terms of possession. 72% possession. We conceded um, a bit of a, a crap goal. Then we conceded another crap goal. Ah, now I'm going to be honest with you. I think Robbie Savage mentioned it in the commentary and I was kind of feeling it as he said it. Don't know if United can score two goals here, lad. That, you know, at the time, certainly was thinking, don't know if United can score two goals here. Can we get one? Yeah, I think we've got one in us. Can we get two? feels like a bit of an ask that doesn't it for us to go and get two but two we got and we actually created a hell of a lot of very 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 big chances we had 20 shots in total um we fluffed our lines on a hell of a lot of them there was a lot of them blocked there was a lot of them that we sent skyward but we created a hell of a lot of chances uh and quite high value chances but the defensive vulnerabilities were exposed now this to me is the worrying thing about if and how we're going to play this new system under Ruben Amarim. Because for both of the goals, the first one, Mazraoui has pressed out of the back line and they've come through that gap. On the second one, um, I saw Malassia getting a lot of shit for it. You know, he was, he was culpable. But Martinez has pressed out of the line very high into midfield, potentially... I thought, looking at the replay of it, that's he's probably gone to press someone that Bruno should be covering, and Bruno's kind of caught between two men. And then we've been exposed on the back end of that. Th these are the details that are going to take a while for us to get right, because that's the sort of thing where you just need reps and you just need practice of it, and that's how you're going to get it fixed. Um, obviously, Terrell Malassia's lack of match fitness was showing. He didn't look like he was going to catch him in the slightest. and then. He got hooked at half time uh, for the low. And then we saw a tactical change in the second half um, where we saw Robbie Savage seems to be like really overcooking it a little bit. We were doing a little bit of the, the stuff that we saw under Ten Hag, in all honesty. We went to a, a 4 2 3 1, which evolved into a 3 2 5 with the ball. The one sort of major change that was wigging Robbie Savage out was instead of Delo being in the wide area, Delo was occupying the half space and Garnacho was occupying the wide area. I don't have an issue with that in the slightest. Why would you have an issue with that? There is no difference. You're putting five across the back line. There is no difference. For me, there was no difference. It's a very, very sort of natural evolution of the 3 2 5 build up shape. Um, but it was interesting that. It was interesting, not just that he did it, but also the personnel that we ended up with there, doing it with. Luke Shaw and Casemiro uh, as part of a defence with Masraoui, um and, and Delo being one of the weirder defences that I've ever seen Manchester United uh, put out on a pitch. But it worked. We uh, we established control in the game, and but for a little bit of a hairy moment where Onana's pressed outside of his box, got away with a little bit of a you know, an unintentional handball, but still got away with it. Um, we, you know, we we looked good and we dominated the game and and we we started to really create some chances. That was good. Rasmus Hoyland, instrumental in the comeback, scored a fantastic goal, which was you know very much made by Masraoui's fancy footwork. Um, but his performance in the second half was very important in securing a win. I thought he had a very strong game actually, and he he, he played like a striker. He was getting opportunities inside the box. Still wasn't getting any made by uh, Garnacho, which is disappointing. Let me just check on... I did check with 10 minutes or so to go, and, and I, I saw that he hadn't actually managed to complete a cross at the time. Let me just check if he managed to do it uh, in total. Um, 
No, zero. See, this is the problem with Garnacho. He's had four shots. He's missed two big chances. He's created nothing for anybody else. You know, zero crosses. Th- th- that's the issue, I think, there with, with Garnacho is he's just not had the, the decision-making. Again, there's been so many times he had the... <laughs> He had the opportunity to score loads of goals and just didn't. I thought it was a bit of a poor showing from him again. Um, yes, he's got the goal to, to kick it off with, but again, I thought his decision-making um, left a lot to be desired, I think. Um, so a little bit of a mixed one. Again, more composure, more decision-making required when it comes in front of goal. Um, Luke Shaw and Casemiro. Coming on in defence, just more players getting more reps, I think, in, in the system. I think that's probably a good thing. Um, yeah, I just thought there, there was a hell of a lot to sort of unpack, I think, with it. Um, we're up to 12th in the Europa League, if that means anything to anybody. I'm not sure it will do. Like, <laughs> I, I just thought, I, I can just think, you know, the tactical change was nice at the time that it was needed. He's seen something and he's not been afraid to change it. That is a bit of a difference that we've seen from Ten Hag, who was like, no, I'm going to stick to just this one way of playing, even if it was to our detriment. And that was his game. The one time he mixed it up was the FA Cup final and we won that game. Amarim, in his first home game, sets us out to play a certain way, which he's probably only had a couple of training sessions on, tweaks it, adapts it on the fly... And manages to get a result out of doing it, so he gets he gets a lot of brownie points for that. I think that'd be absolutely fair. Um, Holland, I'm probably going to talk about Holland tomorrow when I actually drill into the stats a little bit before we do that. But his movement was better. He looked like he had more instinct. Um, he 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 was clinical with his finishing. He was better in his duels. That he's been poor in his duels this season so far. Just been second best in so many of them, but it was a lot better in his duels. The pressing from the front really suits him. And I saw the interview uh, briefly at the end there, where he was talking about how the manager said, "Don't even think about what's going on behind you. Just go press them." And how much freer did he look when it came to his pressing because of that? I guess that's what I'm, you know. That's the small percentages in in a, a team performance that a manager can make um but yeah not perfect how did you think bruno did in the uh the center of the park because i thought i thought he looked good i thought he offered like a nice bit of balance i think him and ugarte are definitely going to get um exposed a little bit at times because both of them want to press um he was only dribbled past once He, he probably could have done a little bit better for the equalizer but he was industrious again. He completed 88% of his passes, which is a little bit higher than he would do higher up. He had um, seven out of nine accurate long balls, showing the range that he's got and, and why perhaps he could play there. I, I thought it was an all right showing by Bruno in that area uh, of the pitch alongside Ugarte. Um, we we talked about it a little bit on Twitter yesterday, thinking, you know, could he do it? And, you know, it gives you the opportunity to try and mount a little bit higher up. Gaffer went for it. I think the, the main disappointment... I thought Garnacho was a disappointment, but the main disappointment, I think, was Anthony. Um, he, he just looks lost, doesn't he? He just looks like he's just not at the same level as anybody else on the pitch. He created nothing. He kept the ball okay, I guess. You know, he, he kept it nice and short. He was looking at a link play, really, but wasn't really effective in his duels. Did lose the ball a fair few times. Didn't really do a lot defensively. Just wasn't... A, a good game from him, I don't think, uh, in the grand scheme of things. But I don't think he's good enough to be a Manchester United player. Um, but I'm not leaving it on that. I'm going to leave it on a high. I'm going to say, well done to the gaffer for getting his first win at Old Trafford. Um, from where United have been this season, and even where we were against Ipswich, actually, we were boring. I don't think we were boring tonight. I thought we were, were quite entertaining and, and quite full on. And yes, the opposition plays a massive part of that. But it might be a similar game against Everton and, and hopefully it's it's not two goals conceded, but it's another three points for us uh, against Everton. I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.